morning, fourth graders. This is Miss Ferguson. It is Tuesday, April 14th. I hope you had a nice long weekend and took a break from all the hard work that you've been doing. And I hope you got to enjoy some time with your family. And there was some beautiful weather too, so I hope you got to enjoy some of that. We are moving on this week to talking about theme. And I know you're probably thinking, we've talked about this before. And you're right, we have. Theme is a very important skill in fourth grade reading. So it's something that we will work on, talking about types of themes, how to find it, how to support it in a text, and practicing it with our own reading. So our learning target today is I can find the theme of a text and support it with details from the text. We're going to go through our PowerPoint lesson today, and then we'll talk about our assignments for this week. What is theme? Theme refers to the underlying message of a story or a poem. You know that we've worked before with Love That Dog, which was poetry, but we also talk about theme in reference to the books we're reading or things that we might even see on TV. Theme is a big idea. It's something that you can learn about life in general. So it's what the author is trying to teach us about life in general. Sometimes an author will come right out and state the theme of a story or a poem. I looked at all the candy I could buy. I had the dollar right there in my hand, but suddenly I didn't feel hungry. I wished I hadn't stolen the dollar. I wished that I hadn't taken the money from my brother's bank. I don't think I want to buy anything today, I muttered quickly to the clerk. Then I ran from the store. I had learned something important. It's better to be honest than to have money. In that case, the author came out and told us the lesson to be learned was, it's better to be honest than to have money. When a theme is stated, it's usually found at the end of the poem or story because the lesson is learned from the entire poem or from all the events in the story. A helpful hint is to look at the last page of a story to see if there is a stated theme. However, as you well know, theme is not always stated. In fact, more often than not, we find that it isn't and that we have to infer a theme. So that means we have to make an inference. Remember, an inference is an educated guess using the information we have. We knew that it was time to set the butterfly free. We had seen it make its chrysalis and emerge. Then it had flown around in the cage, trying to stretch its wings. Although we felt a little sad, we opened the lid to the cage one evening. The butterfly seemed confused and didn't leave at first. Then, in one burst of zigzag fluttering, it erupted from the cage and flew all the way to the end of the yard and down the hill by the school. That was the right thing to do, Aiden said. I know, I answered, even though I already worried about the butterfly. What would it eat? How would it live? What clues do you see in this text that might lead us to a theme? In this case, we've underlined some potential hints. Free, flew, the right thing. In this case, the lesson is that wild creatures should be set free. In this case, the butterfly was set free. It flew away. And even though they knew, they were worried, they knew it was the right thing to do. You've probably read something with this theme before. A lot of times the same themes appear over and over in literature. Some common themes. Persistence pays off. Honesty is better than cheating. It's more important to be nice than to be popular. Be careful what you wish for. Love is the most important force. 
let's take a look at this poem and see if you can find the theme. A day to play got washed away. Rain comes down, covers town. Eyes are sad, rain is bad. Come downstairs, get the chairs, blankets, sheets, looking neat. Inside forts, instead of sports, rainy day tears can turn into cheers. How does this speaker feel at the beginning of the poem? And how does the speaker's feelings change? Well, at first you can see that the speaker seemed upset. The eyes were sad, rain is bad. But then they took out the blankets and the sheets and the forts and instead of being sad, it turned into something fun. Some common themes we talked about are persistence pays off, good can come from bad, a cheerful attitude can overcome obstacles, and love conquers all. Any of those themes could be supported by this text. And it, for example, good can come from bad, and a cheerful attitude can overcome obstacles. Either of these can be supported by this poem. Can you find the details that support these? Well, let's see. Good can come from bad. Evidence I can see in the text the day starts out badly because of the rain. The speaker builds indoor forts. And then the speaker realizes that rainy days can still be fun. A cheerful attitude can overcome obstacles. What evidence do you see in the text to support this? Think about it. A cheerful attitude can overcome obstacles. At first, they were upset. Their eyes were sad. They were teary. They were really bummed out that they were stuck inside. And instead of wallowing in that, they came downstairs. They got the materials. They made a fort, and it turned into a fun day. What evidence do you see here that supports the idea that that positive attitude can help you get through anything? So what have you learned so far? What is theme? Quiz yourself here. The theme is the underlying message of a piece of text. How can I find the theme of a text? Sometimes the author will state the theme, and if they do, it's usually somewhere near the end of the work. Sometimes, though, we have to use clues to figure out the theme. And what do we call that when we have to figure out the theme using details in the text? If you said infer, you are correct. Now you try. I want you to think about books you have read and movies you have watched. What themes did you notice? Do you see the same things come up again and again as you're reading or watching? Now it's time for you to find some themes in your reading. One of your weekly prompts in your packet is that you are supposed to complete your daily reading and you are given a choice of five writing prompts. So one for each day when you complete your 35 minutes. One of the prompts is, and it's the second one listed, what is the theme of this book? Support your answer with details from the text. So today your independent writing assignment is going to be, first you'll complete 35 minutes of your independent reading, and then you're going to write a paragraph telling me one potential theme for your book and support it with details from your text. Remember you're using RAD, so you wanna restate, you wanna answer and tell me the theme and then give me at least two details to support it. And remember that you're using your best capitalization and punctuation because this is something that you are handing in. In order for you to hand it in, even though we're not together, you can take a picture and it can be sent to me via email or dojo, or you can email it to me, whatever's best for you. I've even had a couple scholars typing them up on Google Docs, and that is fantastic as well, because it helps you practice your typing. 
any of those ways is fine by me. It just helps me see your work, and that's obviously how I check to see how you're doing with the lessons, and it shows me that you're participating in the lessons. Today on Dojo, a agenda went up for the week, so all the rest of the days of the week are listed with all your assignments for each day. These are also found in your packet, so you can always look there as well. You are moving on to a new lesson this week, and it's lesson nine, and it is determining theme. So today's YouTube lesson goes along with what you'll be doing in your packet. So determining the theme of a story. Your pages are all listed on the agenda. Remember that you'll be handing this in when we return to school. So you're completing all of the work and getting your signatures, and we will be taking it from you and assessing it when we go back. You also have articles up on News ELA, and these are listed in the agenda as well. And you need to make sure that you are logging in daily, and that you are reading your article, and that you are answering the quiz questions and the writing prompts. There are five posted for this week. You can choose which ones to do. I will say that two of them do go along with theme and common themes, so it might be a good idea to start with those. Also, if you are behind on any pages from last week or even before that, you need to make sure that you're using some time every day to catch up. It's never too late to submit your work and it's never too late to get caught up. I've been really happy to talk to scholars and parents and check in. I've been able to answer some questions and help people with any things that were confusing. Please reach out if you have any questions or problems. My number is listed in the dojo message with the agenda. My email is kferguson at brighterchoice.org, and I can be messaged on dojo as well. I hope you girls are doing great. I can't wait to see you again in person, and I look forward to reading about the themes in your books. Have a great day.